Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Doug. And this is Travels and Travails. Today we're going to talk about tick removal, tick prevention, and I'm going to tell you a time when I had to take Doug to the emergency room for a tick bite. Hey, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Last year, my husband Doug woke me up in the middle of the night. He said he had some pain in his left rear thigh. I woke up and I turned on the light, and that's when I realized that there was a small black dot on the back of his leg, and it was terribly swollen. I woke up in the middle of the night. My left thigh was throbbing. I reached down to see what was going on. Um, there was a big welt there, severe pain between my hip bone and my knee joint. Um, couldn't hardly get out of bed. Woke up my wife to have her look at it, inspect me for ticks. He asked me to look at the area to make sure it wasn't a tick. I got out a flashlight and looked closely and sure enough, there was a tick embedded in his leg. There was a tick embedded in there and she tried to get it out. I removed the tick and placed it in a baggie for identification. And so I called the emergency room due to the severe pain and swelling. And they said to come in right away because it could potentially uh, be carrying Lyme disease. After talking to the doctor, we made the decision to go to the emergency room. It was 4 a.m. At the hospital, he was given antibiotics for treatment of Lyme disease. My wife graciously got up from her deep slumber and drove me to the emergency room, at which time they inspected the tick because we'd saved it in a baggie, and they decided to um, monitor it monitor me for about two hours and then gave me some antibiotics as a preventative measure for Lyme disease. If you've ever had an encounter with ticks, tell us in the comments below. Ticks like mosquitoes are a plague of the outdoors. They can be found all over the continental United States and Hawaii and in many other countries as well. Ticks are sneaky. They get on your body and embed themselves in sometimes unmentionable places. Ticks release the anesthetic when they bite. That's why most people don't even know that they've been bitten until they're experiencing some kind of discomfort or itchiness. According to the CDC, ticks carry diseases like Colorado tick fever, Q fever, and Lyme disease. It's often said an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, and this is no exception. Ticks rest on the tip of grasses and shrubs, waiting for a host. Contrary to popular belief, they cannot jump or fly. Because of this, the best way to avoid contact with a tick is to stay in the middle of the trail, avoiding tall grasses and shrubs. In conjunction with avoiding ticks, sprays can be used on equipment, clothing, and skin. Permethrin is a spray that's used on clothing and equipment to kill ticks. According to the manufacturer, permethrin will last six weeks or six washings. One good thing to know is that permethrin is toxic to cats. Whenever I spray our clothes or equipment with permethrin, I always do it outside, away from our house cat. When the clothing's dry, I bring it in the house, but never before that. In addition, we use a flea and tick medication on our dog Sullivan and still I'm constantly removing ticks. It's a daily battle since we live in a wooded area. An additional method of prevention is checking for ticks whenever you come indoors. Remove clothing and check your entire body for ticks. Washing clothing in a hot washing machine and a hot dryer is an effective way to remove ticks from clothing. Also, inspect your gear and your pets before you bring them inside. I'm here to tell you, there are quite a few misconceptions about tick removal. And it's been kind of sad to see those things happen to people sometimes. I saw a photo floating around Facebook last year that described a method of tick removal using a Q-tip where you'd swirl the Q-tip around the tick head. Not effective. Vaseline, that doesn't work. Um, d just don't even bother with those things. We use a tick key to remove ticks from our dog. The tick key is really effective on the dog because of his fur. 
When I'm removing a tick from Doug, because I've actually never had a tick embedded in my skin. Can you believe that? Um, but Doug has had quite a few. Whenever I'm removing a tick from Doug, I use fine tip tweezers. I have a little Swiss Army knife and I use that as part of my first aid kit because it has a pair of tweezers. So the other day when Doug got a tick, I went to get the tweezers out of the Swiss Army knife and try to take the tick off with them and they didn't work. So you want to make sure that you have tweezers that are really strong, like can really grip on the end. And now I realize that I have to replace those from my first aid kit. The CDC gives some recommendations for removing ticks. And um, of course, like I said, one of the really important things is to use a pair of tweezers that has a really fine tip because you want to make sure that you get down in there as close to the tick head as possible to pull it out. I know this sounds really gross, but honestly, if this happens to you, you're going to want to know how to get rid of this tick. So this is what else the CDC says about it. They say, um, pull upward with steady, even pressure. Don't twist or jerk because you want to make sure that you get the mouth parts off. And this is really gross too, but they have a little mouth part and they stick it in your skin and you don't want to leave that in the skin. You want to make sure that you completely remove that, um, that mouth part. Sometimes it breaks off, you know, even you try your best, you have the right tweezers, you do everything right. And then the little tick head is in there still. So then you can try and get that out with tweezers, but if you can't get it out, don't keep digging. Just um, wash it the best you can and, and it'll, you know, your body will take care of it. So just clean it out, disinfect it with rubbing alcohol and wash your hands really well. So I don't touch the tick ever with my hands. They're nasty, gross things. I don't touch them. So what I do is I always have a plastic bag ready to go. And if you want to, you can put a little alcohol in the plastic bag and you just, after you pull the tick, you just put it there in the plastic bag and zip that thing up. If it falls on the ground, you know what I do? I turn that plastic bag inside out and I grab the tick with the inside of the plastic bag. Kind of like if you're picking up dog poop, you know how you do that? I do it like that and then I zip it up or if I can't get it that way I might take a paper towel and pick it up I never touch those nasty things and even after I'm done removing ticks I wash my hands with soap and water and the CDC also re recommends that you disinfect your hands with alcohol I don't do that but I think that's a good another step never crush the tick with your fingers that seems like a no-brainer to me because I don't even want to touch that sucker. Another thing that you can do if you don't feel comfortable putting that baggie with the tick in your trash can is you can flush it down the toilet. Yep, let's put it right down there. Flush. The purpose of this video was not to give you the heebie-jeebies, although I'm sure it did. The purpose of this video was to give you some tips on how to deal with these pests in the outdoors. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button.